again, St. John's family and friends, this is Pastor Brady, and to all of those that join us online, this is our online Sunday school uh, for January 17th, 2021. This Sunday school is offered each Sunday, streaming live on Facebook. It is then posted to the Facebook page, shared on our YouTube page, and sent out via the church email link each week as well. And we invite anyone to watch um, and to share. And we also um, encourage those that would like to come to in-person Sunday school. They are still meeting at 9 a.m. each Sunday uh, with a time of opening and prayer in our gathering room, which is adjacent to our sanctuary. And that's a room where they can social distance and spread out. Um, of course, right now, uh, many um, other functions in the church, Bible studies, uh, some of the other classes are not taking place, but we do have in-person Sunday school and this online Sunday school each week um, that are taking place. And for our online Sunday school, uh, in the fall and now in the winter, we have been studying the Psalms. And we're not going straight through, but we are uh, you know, going through different Psalms um, that apply to what's going on in the world right now. And last week we looked at the 83rd Psalm. This week we turn to the 86th Psalm. Uh, so if you have a Bible, and I encourage you if you don't this week and you'd like to tune in next week, uh, go out and get a good study Bible uh, that has the context, um, that can tell you the authorship, um, that can tell you uh, the time period the scriptures are written, that has the commentary um, down below. It's important to have a Bible like that when you really study the scripture deeply. That's what we want to do. We're not just here to look at it in Sunday school time, but we want to be reminded of this scripture, maybe later in the day or later in the week, and return to it and see what it means in a new light, in a new place in our lives, and, and see how we can apply it to our lives in the days, weeks, months to come. It's important to always return to the scripture, to study it, to know where that scripture came from why it was written, why it is there to speak to us in this modern age. So I encourage you now to take out your Bible, um, even if you don't have a study Bible now, whatever Bible you may have, and if you could turn to the 86th Psalm as we look to read the Psalm together, and then look to see what the Word of the Lord says to us today. Now, in my Bible, it says the theme of the 86th Psalm is devoted trust Devoted trust in times of deep trouble. Well, I think we can all agree there seems to be some times of deep trouble, and they have existed throughout this past year and have carried over into this new year of 2021. And that trouble has existed in the form of a pandemic. That's the big one. It has existed in the form of injustices we see in the country. It has it has revealed itself in divisions amongst people in our nation and in the world. And, you know, we've seen scenes of destruction and of pain. We've seen scenes of loss and desperation throughout the last year and into this year. And, and maybe it's not that desperation and pain and loss and those things have not existed in the past. It's not that trouble didn't exist in the past, but it seems to be more at the forefront over this past year, and the, the pandemic seems to have brought the troubles of life that exist around us to the forefront, uh, to the present. Um, so the theme today is, of course, appropriate, as, as all the Psalms seem to be, no matter when you read them, it, it, it seems like God is speaking through those words to us and, and how we should be and how we should approach Him. After all, the Psalms are about praising God, about a relationship with God, if you remember, if you've watched before, I've talked about how we attribute most of the Psalms to King David, but they were written by other authors, uh, often people in the temple court um, or the priests. Um, and today, of course, is one by King David. And it's all about his devotion and trust in God. And we're, we need to look at David's trust and his devotion in today's scripture reading and then see how we can apply that trust and devotion to our lives even in these days of great trouble, even in these days where maybe all we see is the dark stuff and the bad stuff around us. 
Let us look to the word of the Lord to guide us today in our study. The 86th Psalm of King David. A prayer of David. Hear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Guard my life, for I am devoted to you. You are my God. Save your servant who trusts in you. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I call you all day long. Bring joy to your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. You are forgiving and good, O Lord, abounding in love to all who call upon you. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Listen to my cry for mercy. In the day of my trouble, I will call on you, for you will answer me. Among the gods there is none like you, O Lord. No deeds can compare with yours. All the nations you have made will come and worship before you, O Lord. They will bring glory to your name. For you are great and do marvelous deeds. You alone are God. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart, that I may fear your name. I will praise you, O Lord, my God, with all of my heart. I will glorify your name forever. For great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the depths of the grave. The arrogant are attacking me, O God. A band of ruthless men seeks my life men without regard for you. But you, O oh Lord, are compassionate and a gracious God. You are slow to anger. You are abounding in love and faithfulness. Turn to me and have mercy on me. Grant your strength to your servant and save the son of your maidservant. Give me a sign of your goodness that my enemies may see it and be put to shame. For you, O oh God, have helped me and have comforted me. May the Lord bless the reading of his holy word on this day. There's so much to tackle in this one psalm. So much devotion, so much trust that David is showing to God as he asks him in prayer to come into his life, come into his life and, and offer him deliverance, to show him a sign, to help him against his enemies. Even so, as he praises God for who God is. And before we get back into the Word and look at some of the key parts of the 86th Psalm, I want you to be thinking, what is your life like right now? What are the troubles you have in mind that keep you up at night? What are the troubles that are on your mind when you awake in the morning, when you make your coffee, when you prepare to go to work? What are the troubles that you see before you? And how are you dealing with those troubles? How are you dealing with that pain? How are you dealing with that desperation? How are you dealing with that darkness? Because David gives us the key today. No matter what trouble we face, no matter what problems lie ahead, and we can't predict the future, we can't perfectly plan for it, no matter what comes, there is but one that can lead us onward. There is but one that helps us overcome. There is but one who shows us everlasting, undying, uh, unchanging faith in us and love for us. And that is our God. He showed us that through Jesus Christ. We have to be remem remembering that all the time, every day. God's commitment was shown on the cross through the blood and broken body of Jesus. So now, in days where we see trouble, and maybe it's the big troubles we're facing now, the pandemic, the division, being scared about what's going to happen in the future, 
Or maybe it's just the simple troubles that build up every day. Maybe it's your finances. Maybe it's a, a relationship. Maybe the car broke down. Maybe you made it somewhere late. Something simple. Just troubles that are before you. Too much on the schedule. Too busy life. Too busy of life. How do you deal with that? How do you get through with that? David shows us the example. You go to the one that can help you get through. The only one that gets us through. Our God that loves us and whose faith in us is never broken. Who's covenant with us. We're the ones that break the promise. We're the ones that turn away from God. He never turns away from us because he loves us so much. We go to God. We pray to him just like David did here. He gave a prayer to God to sustain him and to get him through in his time of trouble. In his time of trouble, he wasn't scared and ran away from God. No, he was devoted and trusted that God would get him through. And I feel if more of us, each of us, can do a better job, if all of us those that are believers, and then reaching out to those that are not believers, if we put our faith in God, if we start trusting and being more devoted in, the, in Him and what He can do, how we can change our lifestyle, how the world changes, how we get along better, how our attitude and our outlook, our disposition change for the better. Let's get back into the Word. I want to first just the first verse, hear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Hey, maybe out there watching, maybe you're not poor. Most of us are okay. We're doing okay. We have food. We have nice clothes, a place to live, a car. Now, maybe we're not feeling poor and needy in that way, but guess what? We are all poor and needy if we are clinging to the ways of the world. And boy, do we need God, because there are forces out there working against God's people. We're going to talk about that a little later, as David mentions. So we are poor and needy. We need build up in the spirit. We need build up in the power and grace and love of our God. In verse 3, David says, Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I call to you all day long. Bring joy to your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. David is declaring that he believes that he serves God. And he's asking for his mercy He's asking God to bring joy into his life. He continues saying, You are forgiving and good, O Lord, abounding in love to all who call upon you. And that is so true. Sometimes we don't want to believe it. Sometimes people in this world tell us that God is not there, or he's not listening, or he doesn't exist. God is always abounding in love. Some are living out there fearful of God, because that's the, the type of church they grew up in, or how they were taught where it was pounded into them to just fear God. But God loves you. He's abounding in love. There will be a judgment day. And we are called to continually build ourselves up and live better. And God doesn't like sin. That's The answer to sin is death. But God gives us life through Jesus Christ. So he is always abounding in love. Especially when we call upon his name, when we seek him out. David continues on and he says, Hear my prayer, O Lord. Listen to my cry for mercy. In the day of my trouble, I will call to you, for you will answer me. What does David show in that, in that line of the scripture? In that verse, David shows a commitment and a confidence that God will answer him. Do we have that commitment and confidence? Now, I know it's hard because we want God to answer us in certain ways in our times of trouble. We have to say, God, let your will be done in our times of trouble, because God always knows better and has the better answer than we do. We have to remember that. In verse 8, David continues, Among the gods there is none like you, O Lord. No deeds can compare with yours. What does that mean? There are no gods like you. You see, in this time period, there were so many different deities or gods that maybe were, were animals or maybe things of the earth or spirit creatures or different things, you know, idols that different cultures and, and, and religions of that time worshipped. And they thought they each had a certain power, certain ability. You know, think of, even think towards, you know, like the Greek, Greek gods and goddesses. Uh, but, or, you know, the Egyptian world, there were so many different 
gods that were attributed to certain animals or creatures. So, basically, David is saying, there's none like you, O Lord. No deeds compared to you. You are the one God. He continues, all the nations you have made. They will come and worship before you, O Lord. They will bring glory to your name, for you are great and do marvelous deeds. You alone are God. That means the things of this world, those false gods, those deities that were made up then, and the false gods of today, which are money and power and beauty and things of this world, they're not God. And they have no true power. There's but one God the true God that loves us, wants to be a part of our lives, that has made the heavens and earth, and that has made us in his image. We have to recognize that. That's a, that's a big step there in knowing of his power and his love. And that those other things, the gods of today, are nothing, the gods of this world. There's but one true God. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in truth. Give me an undivided heart, that I may fear your name. What is that line? I think that line might be the most important one in this whole scripture. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Have you strayed from God? Has the pandemic got you down, being separated from church? Or, or maybe your routine's just different? Or maybe you haven't gone to church in a long time. Maybe you haven't immersed yourself in the Word in a long time. Maybe you have. Maybe, maybe you're still in the Word, but you find yourself straying. Always come back to the Word and always be guided by the Spirit. Because just as David says right here, teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. You know why there's so much trouble in this world right now? Because too many people are walking in the false truths of the world around us and not the true truth, the true wisdom, which is our God. It's time to get back to God and His Word, and it's time to get back to God and let the Spirit rule our lives. So David says here, teach me your way and I will walk in your truth. And then he says, give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. Our hearts cannot be divided between God and the ways of the world. The ways of the world can pull at our heart, but we can't place part of ourselves into this world and then with God and truly follow him. We got to give the whole thing to him. That doesn't mean we won't falter in sin. That doesn't mean we won't fall back to the ways of the world. But we got to be true and give our heart to God, knowing that when we fall, he picks us up. We need to have an undivided heart and walk in his truth if we're truly going to tackle the troubles and problems of our lives and of the world around us. He says in verse 14, The arrogant are attacking me, O God. A band of ruthless men seeks my life. Men without regard for you. But you, O Lord, are a compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. Turn to me and have mercy on me. Grant your strength to your servant and save the son of your maidservant. The arrogant are attacking him, and he needs saved. He needs salvation. The arrogant and ruthless men. Oh, our world is full of arrogance, full of greed, full of ruthlessness. We've seen some of that on our TVs last week. We've saw, seen it throughout the year. I mean, ruthlessness in different directions because of extreme political views in different directions. The extremists in our world seek to bring it down. But there's a whole bunch more people out there that are just walking in the ways of the world and completely turning off God. You know what? It's a lot easier for the true ruthless one to attack them. And that's the devil. The one that puts sin before us. The one that tempts us. The one that is attacking our hearts. That's why that heart has to be undivided and true to God. We have to let him take control. Let him armor us against the devil and the ruthlessness of today's world. Just like David asked for that protection, we too have to ask for God's protection and his guidance and armored with the power of the Holy Spirit. Do you feel like that today? Say, God, come into my life. Give me your spirit. Lead me forward in the truth of your word. I'll face down my troubles and I'll face off the ruthless evil of the world that seeks to attack me and pull me away from it. That needs to be our thought and our prayer today. Come into my life, God. Protect me. 
and the troubles before me. Help me overcome them. Help me fight off the evil which seeks to get in my heart and cause me to do sin. Finally, as David closes out this prayer to God, he says, Give me a sign of your goodness, that my enemies may see it and be put to shame. For you, O Lord, have helped me and have comforted me. David asks for a sign of his goodness, really a sign so that others can see. It's okay to ask God for signs. Perfectly okay. But just be remembering and be aware that God might already be giving the signs. He might already be pulling you in a direction. You might, you might feel that pull to do something more for others, to reach out to the one that is a non-believer or hurting, to get more immersed in the Word, to, you know, attend church, whether it be tuning in online or, or when you're able to come back to church in person. Maybe making that phone call to a friend that's in need. Someone that maybe you fought with, haven't talked to in a while. That urging to do what is good, to do what is loving, to do what is compassionate. That's God. He's given us signs all the time. Because we see all the badness, we see all the trouble, because that's what feeds the news streams. But there's a lot more good out there. And that good is enacted by a God that loves us so much. The one that comforted and helped David will comfort and help us. But we must turn our lives over to him. For there's going to be many more troubles before us. The question is, do we trust him? And are we devoted unto that God that loves us so, so much? Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we are thankful for the word today. It speaks to us in this age just like it did as David prayed it so many years ago. David's word should speak true to each of us because we should each be seeking to be your servant. We should trust in you. We should devote our lives to you. And we need to know that the troubles that we face can only be overcome through your love and your faithfulness. So, Lord, help us in the week to come. There are many troubles before us. There is ruthless evil out there trying to attack and pull us away from you. God, may we live into the word and its truth. May our heart be undivided, and may our bodies and souls be immersed in your Holy Spirit always. In the name of Jesus, our Redeemer and Savior. Well, thank you for joining us today. If you're watching live, our church service will stream live at 10.30 a.m. You can always join us in person as well and social distance in the sanctuary. And also, uh, the services and devotions are posted to our Facebook and YouTube pages throughout the week and sent via the church email link. If you want to be on that email link, just contact our church office. Well, I hope this psalm has spoken to you whenever you may watch and that you take to heart that we can get through these troubled times together with our God that loves us so much. May God bless you all.